I was asked to, to talk about value chain analysis. What does it mean uh, technically? And maybe uh, how have we applied that in the case of the thermal holotropic value chain targeting uh, the control of African swine fever? Okay, so um, before I uh, go into the topic directly, I will just want to recall that value chain analysis is done uh, targeting a market. It's a business. It's a business approach to improve a value chain targeting the consumption. So if there is no demand for a product, then there is no value chain assessment. So that is why uh, it is important to know uh, the role of livestock, the demand of livestock, and why value chain assessment is, is the right approach to improve uh, the demand and also improve uh, the needs of the community. So livestock contribute to the livelihood of and food security of 1 billion of people around the world particularly the small uh, holders and the poor people. And we know that uh, up to 30% of the GDP in developing countries um, also come from livestock. Uh, some countries are at the lower end and others are at the higher end of 33% of household income. And there's an increased demand of edible livestock product as a result of the increased growth in economic consumption and export because uh, the population is increasing, livestock demand is increasing, then there is a need to increase the production. So with the right approach, supplying this growth demand can be a pathway of out of poverty, especially for small, uh, small people, provided that uh, these actors are organized, have access to necessary inputs and services and finance to improve their value chain. Okay, so uh, a basic definition uh, of a value chain according to IFAD, I use the IFAD uh, definition in my talk. So value chain follows, um, a value chain follows as it moves from a primary uh, production to a final consumption. So uh, the product uh, is, is, is followed from the production to the consumption. And then at each step of the node, value is added to, to the product. So the pathway, the process from the production to the consumption is called a value chain. Okay, so it's very important to note that a value chain is uh, determined by the market, not the increased processing or the physical transformation. So uh, if there is no market, as I said, there is no value chain. So it's not just uh, processing the product or transforming the product to the, to the consumer, which is important, but do we have the demand for those products that are consumed, uh, that are processed? So the market is the pool of the value chain analysis. Okay, so um, some characteristic of a value chain, um, you should note that uh, you can have your valuation, like uh, targeting a commodity or product, and then uh, a, a, a vibrant, as you say, or strong valuation can also contribute to strengthening all the valuation, all the link valuation. So there is a ramification of value chains. So you are following maybe the life peak demand to the market and or talk to the uh, to the consumption, and then on the other side, you are also developing all the valuation for for the food crop. Uh, to go to the supply to 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 uh, feed to the to the farm also has the value chain. So there is a supply crop residue livestock product value chain, and there are all the value chain ramification depending on uh, on your target. And another characteristic of the value chain is that it is applied at the meso level between the macro, like the micro economy to the micro and the level. So in between. It's where you have all these actors and stakeholders who own the value chain. Another thing to note that is a uh, value chain is um, can be short, uh, very simplified. It can also be very long and very complex depending on, on the product and what are your targets. So short value chain could be maybe just uh, minimal uh, processing of a product, uh, the live pig to the market and then slaughtered at the slaughterhouse 
for consumption, the meat. Another lo long value chain could be the live pig, uh, market uh, slaughtered, uh, process for sausage and so and so, and have a longer, a longer value chain. And the representation of the value chain can be also very simple, very linear, as you will see in my talk. It can also be very complex, but most of the time, the linear representation of the value chain hides a lot of complexity around the value chain. Okay. Um, yes, this is what I was saying. The input and services that go into each step of the value chain and the enabling environment that affect the value chain cannot easily be shown in a value chain map, uh, but are virtually important. So I will show it later. Okay, uh, what are the components of the value, of a value chain map? So we have the actors who are the producers, the collectors, the consumers who are in the, in the middle. And then we have the input and service uh, services, paid or supply feed, veterinary drugs, and services extension advice, market information, and finance. And then we have the enabling environment, which is the institutional, the policy, the legal framework, the business environment, the cultural, social, religious issue, gender, and the infrastructure that, that, that support the functioning of the value chain. Okay, uh, this figure is from FAO. This is a very simplified generic value chain. Uh, it goes from the left, uh, providers of input, and then you have the producers, the processors, and then the marketers. And at each node, like between the production and the processing, you have a fresh product that can be come out from there, from the processor to the marketers, you can have a product. And then you have the middleman, the services, uh, uh, and then the, the supporting uh, environment. And then you have the, the consumers at the end. This is, this is just a schematic uh, value chain. I will show you later a typical value chain we have developed for, for the peak value chain in Uganda. Okay, uh, other characteristic of a value chain. So as I said, a value chain targeted, targeted uh, has an objective, value chain assessment has an objective. And we usually, when we develop projects targeting smallholders, we talk about inclusiveness of value chain. So uh, an inclusive value chain for the proper uh, community. So they should seek to upgrade and improve the efficiency of the value chain, uh, value chain primary to benefit target groups. So uh, the objective of a value chain assessment is to try to identify what are the gaps, what are the issues in order to upgrade the value chain and improve the efficiency so that each actor of the value chain can benefit from the value chain. Through successful value chain project, these target group become more dynamic actors, can benefit from high income level, more stable income streams through the year, greater resilience to shock, included uh, induced by weather or climate change, disease or market fluctuations. So that is an objective of the value chain, is that those actors who are part of the value chain can benefit from the value chain and have a sustainable uh, supply uh, and income uh, from the value chain. So um, how to update the value chain? Chain. How, how do we upgrade value chains? So there are three types of, uh, of, of, of upgrading level. Upgrading should be a, a, in response to a clearly defined market opportunity that promises a positive return on investment. Again, the business angle of it. So if you want to upgrade, if you say you are going to upgrade the value chain, it must uh, respond to the market opportunities and then have a return in investment for actors. Okay, so the first level of upgrade could be a product or processing upgrade. So upgrading the, the product or the process. That is aiming to doing things better or bigger and include enhancing the efficiency of production processes and the quality of product to comply with buyer's requirements. Okay, so, so the requirements of the demand um, uh, influence how 
uh, the product is upgraded. If uh, for the case of pork, if they say they want sausage, then we'll see at the production level, which type of animal do we produce in order to produce very uh, high quality sausage at the end. And this has to be linked to the quality of the meat, uh, the, uh, the, the organoleptic um, 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 characteristic of the meat, and that can be determined by the way you feed your animals and so and so. So the demand first, and then we'll see what to do to, to address the demand. If you take a case of the a poultry keeper may use improved feed formulation and vaccinate her bird to produce more eggs per bird. So if the demand say we want more eggs, we want good quality eggs, then at the production level, we say, okay, we'll have to vaccinate, we have to improve the formulation of the feed in order to have quality eggs. Another level of upgrading is the functional upgrading. It involves producing new goods and services, either upstream or downstream of the value chain. So the upstream uh, could be intervention that include livestock keepers producing high quality food like bracaria for their animals for sale. Okay, a downstream um, functional upgrading could be uh, farmers may uh, uh, produce yogurt from the raw milk. Okay, that is, that is the downstream. So that is also another way of upgrading the value chain. And finally, um, we, could all, we can also upgrade the coordination and the business models. And that could be done at two levels, the horizontal relationship or the vertical relationship. So the horizontal relationship is when uh, the, 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 the upgrade or the intervention happens among the same node. Like if you take the producers, so the intervention will happen within the producers, like how farmers maybe uh, can uh, organize themselves to sell their product to the market through contracts maybe. And the organization remain within the farmer node. A vertical relationship could be between actors or different segments. So it could be between maybe farmers and milk processors. Okay, so a contract that say, okay, farmers will contract milk processors to buy their milk. So that is a kind of a, a vertical relationship. And that is the third way of upgrading evaluation. Okay, I will uh, step by step, uh, up to eight steps, uh, show what are the steps of evaluation assessment. Okay, so as I said, uh, we don't just do evaluation assessment for doing. Most of the time, evaluation assessment is determined by a, prog uh, a development program that wants to solve a problem in a specific area. And then they decide to engage stakeholders to assess the evaluation and then have a vision uh, to change something in their system. And uh, if we say, okay, we are going to assess the pre evaluation in a, in, in, a, in, a diff in a given country, uh, we, don't, we may not know yet which value chain are you going to ask it? Because there are so many value chains for, for, for live pig. Uh, there is a demand for live pig, there is a demand for sausage, there is a demand for, for raw meat, there are so many demands. So when we are assessing your value chain, then you determine which value chain are you specifically going to, 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 to target. And the first step is the pre preliminary assessment of livestock system. You should understand how life the system is, is, is made, is organized, okay? Uh, what are the conditions under which the evaluation uh, uh, operates, the institutional, the legal, the policy framework? Identify how rural communities could, uh, could participate in the evaluation by focusing on the opportunities, the constraints for women, for men, for, um, for all actors, and then try to understand the, the sector the contribution of the of the sector to the economy is it important? Is not important? And then characterize the structure and the size of livestock holding uh, um, structures. Like, are you targeting a small holder, medium holder, large holder? So all that is done during the first uh, preliminary assessment of the of the system. Uh, the second step is analyzing the target group. So who are we targeting? The target group population strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. Okay, um, what are the aspirations 
of the population. Uh, do they want to produce the livestock uh, just for prestige? Or do they want to, uh, are they targeting to reduce uh, poverty or, or are they targeting to increase income? Or are they targeting job security? So, so what are the aspirations of the, of the actors who demand for the assessment of the value chain? And what is also the contribution of the value chain to the nutrition? What are the gaps? Uh, because if you know what are the gaps in nutrition, we can then target um, the product to fill the gaps in that area. Uh, step number three is now focusing on the market assessment. What are the market requirements in terms of quality, quantity, price, timing, uh, the market points? Uh, what is the core market? What are the core market actors? Their roles in getting the product from farm to con to consumers. So, uh, because the market is so important, we need to understand the market because the market will be driving everything else. And then we select the value chain for analysis. What is the potential for that value chain to grow? Because if we are upgrading the value chain, we want it to grow. Then what are the potential? What are the things that we can do to, to, to grow the value chain? Is it inclusive? Are we including women? Like the case of pigs, uh, smallholders, are we targeting to in, to women or youth for business? And what are the complementary and uh, existing order value chain, livelihood activities that can also help to upgrade the value chain? So we have our pork value chain. Maybe there are other value chain people who are interested in 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 in, in the food uh, to 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 um uh, to produce feed only uh, to get income. Those should be considered because they are important to 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 the, to the value chain we are targeting. And there might be others also who are, who are interested into maybe only training or building capacity youth that are interested into only selling. So all those by um, uh, collateral value chain should be identified. What is the environment, the available natural resource, and then the climate resilience, because that also will affect the value chain. The regulatory policy and business environment, and also the nutrition, as I said earlier. Okay, step number five is now the value chain analysis. And within the value chain analysis, uh, as I said, you have the end market analysis. What is the market demand? And then we do the value chain map, uh, map all these uh, marketing channels, point of leverage. I will show you later how we did it. And also at the production. Uh, in the production, we target who are the livestock producers, who are the traders, who are the collectors, who are the, 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 the brokers. At the processing level also, who are the processors and the distribution, who are the importers, the retailers, and then the wholesalers. And step number six, we now focus on the input services and the systemic issues. So what are the input to, to the value chain? The input to the farm, the input to the market, the input to, to the consumption, the equipment, the supply, the services they demand, trainings, capacity building, uh, extension. What is the finance? Have, do they have access to funds, to loans, to saving groups? The enabling environment, the policy and then the governance. How are they organized? Do they have cooperative? Do they have associations? And all that needs to be determined. And number seven, a strategic analysis and recommendation. And here, partnership is extremely important and policy advocacy. Who are the partners? Who are the stakeholders uh, who can help update the value chain? And then we validate the value chain analysis and develop a stakeholder vision. Step number eight. After doing all this mapping nicely, your value chain, and then you, what is your vision now? What do you want to achieve in 10 years or in 20 years? And that will de uh, define how you will start working to target that. And then step number three, for um, those who are uh, mainly uh, targeting development program, is to finalize the project activities and select your partners and then put in place a monitoring and evaluation framework in, to, in, in order to, 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 to monitor the changes 
uh, along along the way. Okay, so so that is what I wanted to share in terms of uh, the more uh, generic value chain uh, using an economic uh, market perspective. Okay, so what is now the link between value chain analysis and disease control? And here I will, you will use the case of African swine fever I know very well, applied to Uganda. Uh, this, what I've written in this diapo is from the FAO book as well. They said, the purpose of applying a combination of value chain and risk analysis is to address the problem of disease risk and contribute to disease control planning. Therefore, the value chain analysis needs to be focused specifically on elements that either increase disease risk or that are critical in uh, disease risk management. That's avoiding the need for a complete value chain analysis. The best way to achieve this is to ensure that veterinary epidemiologists and social scientists work together through the process at all levels. So value chain analysis is complex and is driven by the market. But if you want to apply the value chain analysis to the risk management of disease, then we need really uh, to focus on what we want and that, and that will avoid us to do all component of a value chain assessment that we may not need. Okay, uh, not sure if it is very visible, but this is an example of a value chain map we have developed for the case of Uganda. Okay, so here, um, we have, um, if you see from the left to the right, we have the pig producers, we have the collectors, transporters, slaughter, slot, uh, the slaughterhouses, slaughtering, processing, wholesale, retail, and consumption. And under each, you have the actors who are there. At the production level, you have the input supply, feed, veterinary, breeders, village boar breeding, private, NGOs, paravets. And then you have um, at the collection node, you have the breeders, partners, and then transport, you have live pig transporters, brokers, uh, slaughter slab, backyard slaughter, uh, abattoir, central abattoir, slaughter slab, pork traders, backyard. So, so this is a, a very detailed value chain map we did when we started uh, to develop the small holy pig value chain in Uganda, starting from scratch. And this enabled us to really understand where do we want to go? Because our objective was to upgrade the value chain and improve income. Uh, also uh, on the way, reduce disease risk, especially for African swine fever. And you see down, we have all the enabling environment, the research organization, development project, financial providers, NGOs. We have NAGRI, which is um, a genetic uh, research uh, institute, the extension NADS. We have the veterinarians, Department of Animal Production, the Ministry for Policy. So all actors we, we deem important to the value chain were represented in this very linear, linear value chain. So this is just a, a graph to show that the value chain is not linear. It is, it is more complex. It is interconnected. Farmers, you can be a farmer, but at the same time, you are transporting your pig and then also you are consuming. So, you are linked to all the nodes of the value chain. A processor can also be a consumer. A trader can also be a consumer or a transporter. So it, it, it's, very, it, it's very interconnected. It's not linear as we presented in the map. Okay, so uh, the value chain assessment we carried out in 2013, 14, uh, we are, and up to now we are still now Doing some interventions uh, in Uganda. And our team was made of an animal nutritionist, animal health epidemiologist, and agricultural economist, public health scientist, or communication staff, livestock genetics, and then the gender scientist. This is the team we had. And we worked together years, a couple of years to develop, uh, to analyze the value chain. So uh, these are just some examples uh, extracted from from our study, I will not show everything, but just some examples. Like the constraints we identify along the peak value chain were as follow from the input supplier to the consumption at each, each level, you had the specific issues. And I have highlighted in, in red, 
what is linked to DVD, especially African swine fever. Uh, if you see at the production level, we put high disease burden, especially African swine fever, ectoparasite and endoparasite. Low bargaining power, that is related to marketing. And then we had a uh, constraint at each node for each actor. And this is just a summary of those constraints. If you come to the bulking, you have poor biosecurity measure. And then at the slaughter, lack of designated area for centralized slaughtering, no meat infection, poor waste management, at the processing, lack of prerequisites for pork storage, poor quality handling and hygiene, uh, lack of awareness of pork donors, evidence of presence of pathogen causing the disease. This was in 2013. Uh, I want to ensure to Charles Masembe and Rose Ademun, who are here, I'm sure, that we have moved away from this situation, which was in 2013, to a very improved situation now. But these are just examples from, and a lot of things have improved following a lot of interventions uh, in the value chain. Okay, so this is just a chart uh, showing uh, the value chain actors, um, the relation to, to, the, to the spread of the virus, African to find your virus through the practices. Then here we try to map all bad practices that value chain act to do that can enhance our, uh, our influence disease spread. If you take the case of input suppliers, you have uh, the services, uh, the reporting of the outbreak was a bit poor, uh, use of expired drug, quality of poor quality of services. Um, you take, for example, the trading node, uh, the issue with movement permit, uh, the issue with um, mixing sick pigs with healthy pigs for cleaning, disinfection, biosecurity, just a mapping of the practices that uh, influence the disease spread. Okay, and we did a qualitative pathological risk assessment along the value chain targeting uh, biosecurity. There's a paper published on that at Preventive Veterinary Medicine, where we show that uh, the pig trading node had the highest uh, risk in terms of uh, of the disease uh, spread uh, and then transmission because of the activities that happen to the node. And within the pig trading node, we have the live pig, uh, the live pig collectors who represented the highest node of the risk. In um, and 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 this is where really uh, the value chain assessment is really applied. To, to risk qualitative risk assessment now targeting biosecurity in African swine fever. Another study we did uh, is uh, to do an, ex an assessment of, of uh, simulated interventions uh, to upgrade the value chain to control African swine fever. And then we apply the system dynamic modeling to assess the impact of biosecurity intervention uh, on the margin uh, profit of the value chain actors. And here we show that putting producers, butchers, traders, collectors, and wholesalers that uh, if you see biosecurity versus baseline, this is when you apply biosecurity practices alone. And then we have our, our defined biosecurity practices, practices in the model. Uh, alone, you see producers have minus 6% of annual change in the cumulative pro uh, 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 profit in comparison to the baseline. So they are losing when we, we apply only biosecurity. Butchers have an increase of 8.1, traders 10.3, collectors 8.6, and wholesalers 8. So you see that by only applying biosecurity, uh, the producers are the only losers in the value chain. All other actors are gaining. Okay. So if we apply a business hub model, so the business hub we had defined the business hub model as the uh, 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 and by Michelle, um, I think there is a problem with the connectivity. I'm not sure it's on my end or on your end. 
Uh, are other people having the same problem? Uh, no, I hear Michel very well. Okay, so then it's on my end. My my my. Yeah, I also hear you very me. well. Okay, yeah. thank you. Yeah, sorry for that. Okay, so so when we combine by security and business hub, like uh, apply by security and also improve the market access, then we start having uh, traders, collectors having the high return. Although farmers also producers have a high return. So a combination of biosecurity and improving the value chain, uh, the market uh, uh, was translated in a high return for all value chain actors, but highest return for traders and collectors. Um, another aspect we focus on during our, our value chain assessment was the gender dynamic of, the, of African swine fever and, and biosecurity. So we did a lot of uh, work uh, as you know, uh, the role of women in the pig keeping and the division of task and, uh, and labor at the, at the farm level, we studied that a lot. And then that determined also how we, we, we made our value chain very inclusive, uh, targeting uh, women uh, to the value chain. Okay, finally, a couple of uh, slides and I'm done. So uh, what did we do to upgrade the value chain to improve performance and reduce the risk to African swine fever? So what were our interventions or some of our in interventions? The first one was to capacity building because we found out that there was really a lack of capacity or information on best practices, especially by security. So we implement capacity building uh, through some trial to improve knowledge on biosecurity and also improve um, uh, the performance of the value chain. And we have a publication out of that. And what came out was that clear, was very clear that there was very increased improvement in knowledge, but uh, the application of biosecurity was not following as we wanted it because there were other constraints that farmers were facing beyond only by uh, uh, training, okay. And those other concerns were, were also targeting those uh, somewhere else, elsewhere. Okay, oh, we also did some capacity building training at the slaughter house on pork handling because of the poor hygiene, where we train uh, uh, butchers to enhance hygiene carcass handling on biosecurity in one of the municipalities around Kampala, improve hygiene. And some butchers had reported an increase on sale of pork as a result of adop adoption of best practices. So as if you see the second picture down where the lady is uh, uh, showing the back, this is a, a, a slaughter, um, um, a pork joint like a, a sale, uh, a meat sale we have renovated, just putting some nice tiles in, in white and then putting a nice bench, very clean, and then just as a model in that market. And then that, that, uh, that butcher was having to more clients than the others. You were just wanted to show them that improving your, your practices, your, your, your hygiene could attract more consumers. Yeah. And then capacity building around feeding because feeding was found as the major constraint of farmers, even more than African swine fever. Because the feed keeping system for small holder is determined by the availability of feed in most of this area. So we, 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 we try to develop some uh, uh, locally made feed like silage. We did some silage, uh, feed potato silage uh, for, and then de develop some ration around that because feed potato is very available uh, in Uganda. And also uh, develop some training manual brochure to improve the quality of commercial feed. Uh, improving the business performance. So the first thing we did was to develop a question to predict the uh, uh, pig life weight using body measurements in pigs. Because farmers complain that they, they don't weigh, weigh the pig before they sell. And then traders uh, um, just uh, deceive them uh, they don't know the weight of their pig and then they end up losing. So we are trying to see if there could be a way to help farmers weigh their pig in a very, very practical and easy way before they sell so that they can sell on, on the kilogram, but not on the just the, by, by looking at the pig. 
business model hub developed. Um, yes, is what I was saying. We, we, we engage some business model hubs in, uh, in some districts to try to link traders, uh, uh, farmers to the market, and also develop a lot of business, um, business uh, manuals. We develop a multi-stakeholder platform created at the national level with, the, with regional uh, representation to voice the, 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 uh, the, the farmers and the actors to the, to, the, to the decision makers. And then we also um, supported and then designed a central, a central slaughter hub, uh, slaughter's house in one of the districts that have the highest peak population density uh, to target improve uh, meat and also contain African swine fever through a, a slaughter house uh, model uh, surveillance. And finally, um, on the policy side, we develop a policy brief where we show that enhancing biosecurity should not only be at the farmer level, it should go through the all value chain level from the farmer, the traders up to the consumer. And that was really supported by our, our findings uh, during the assessment. And also we uh, pointed out the need of uh, a, a national feed policy uh, uh, enforcement because there are policies around feed policy, uh, quality enforcement, and also push for, for the feed bill to be drafted and enacted. And also issues around meat policy inspections and also uh, uh, issues around animal welfare, transportation of animals during um, during the, the hot hot periods. Okay, so uh, that is it. Uh, this is what I wanted to share with you. This is very simplified um, presentation. There are so many things behind. If you need to, I can share a lot of papers and report with you. And I want to acknowledge here uh, the small holiday pig value and development project led by Dr. Emily Uma in Uganda from Ilri side and also acknowledge the IFAD manual on how to develop validation assessment, which I have also used a lot of examples here. And this is a picture of a lady in uh, Northern Uganda who we met and who only had one, one sow. And from this sow, she was paying school fees for, for six kids every year. Yeah. Okay, thank you to everyone.